everyone, I am Mary Grace Kilong Kilong and I am going to discuss about the components of ecology. So, an every ecosystem is made up of three broad components, producers, consumers, and decomposers. First, we have the producers. Producers make their own food. They do not have to obtain energy from other organisms. They obtain their energy from the sun and make food with that energy through the process of photosynthesis. When we say photosynthesis po, it is the process by which green plants and other organisms use sunlight to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water. Producers may also be called autotrophs, an organism that is able to form nutritional organic substances from simple inorganic substances such as carbon dioxide. Most producers are plants but there are some small organisms that produce food through photosynthesis as well. And this is an example of producer in ecology. And for further explanation, producers are by definition autotrophs, which means they are self-feeding. This group of organisms uses solar energy or more rarely inorganic chemical reactions to create food in the form of energy-rich molecules such as carbohydrates. This process, the synthesis of carbon dioxide into inorganic compounds is called primary production and is indirectly or directly connected to the survival of all life on earth. Plants and lichens are the primary producers on land. Any ecosystem producers are at the base of the entire food web. All other organisms are dependent upon the food-creating activities of primary producers. Next, we have consumers. Consumers may also be called heterotrophs, an organism that eats other plants or animals for energy and nutrients. For example, of heterotrophs includes plants, algae, and some types of bacteria. Heterotrophs are known as consumers because they consume producers or other consumers. Dog bird, fish, and humans are all examples of heterotrophs. There are primary and secondary consumers. Primary consumers are the next link in the simple food chain. These are the plant eaters or herbivores. In addition to the antelope mentioned earlier, examples of primary consumers on the African savanna would be a wild boar or a giraffe. Secondary consumers follow primary consumers in a simple food chain. Secondary consumers can be carnivores or omnivores. Carnivores eat only meat, while omnivores eat both meat and plants. In addition to the cheetah, secondary consumers on the African savanna can include a lion who kills and eats the giraffe or a human who kills and eats the wild boar. In ecosystem, organisms that feed upon other organisms are classified as consumers. Primary consumers are differentiated from other consumers by feeding upon producers, organisms that make their own food. The energy and nutrients consumed by the primary consumers from producers becomes the food for secondary consumers that consume the primary consumers. The primary consumers in turn become the food for secondary consumers which prey upon them. Tertiary consumers subsequently feed on secondary consumers. For example, many large fish begin to For example, many large fish begin life as primary and secondary consumers during the juvenile stage but may grow to become tertiary consumers in their adult life. Other organisms such as humans may feed on both primary producers and consumers throughout their life simultaneously fulfilling a role as primary, secondary, and tertiary consumer. Lastly, we have decomposers. Decomposers include bacteria and fungi. These organisms carry out the process of decomposition, which all living organisms undergo after death. Decomposition is an important process because it allows organic material to be recycled in an ecosystem. Without decomposers, dead organisms would not be broken down and recycled into other living matter. The reason decomposers decompose, however, is simply because they need to survive.
decomposers such as bacteria and fungi break down dead or undigested material and enable materials to be recycled in an ecosystem. The last topic that I will be discussing is emergence concept. Emergence refers to the existence or formation of collective behaviors. What parts of a system do together that they would not do alone? In describing collective behaviors, emergence refers to how collective properties arise from the properties of parts, how behavior at a larger scale arises from the detailed structure, behavior and relationships at a finer scale. The concept of emergence as referring to function in an environment is related to the concept of emergence as the rise of collective behaviors because any system can be viewed along with the parts of its environment as together forming a larger system. The collective behaviors due to the relationships of the larger system's parts reflect the relationships to the original system and its environment. An example of the emergence concept is the cell that make up a muscle display the emergent property of working together to produce the muscle's overall structure and movement. A water molecule has emergent properties that arise out of the properties of oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Many water molecules together form river flows and ocean waves. Trees, other plants, and animals form a forest. Ecology. What is the importance of ecology? Well, the importance of ecology for environmental conservation is to provide information about the benefits of the environment and the use of natural resources to make it in a good conditions in a way that it will not damage the environment. It teaches us of how all organisms on earth interact with each other how all organisms live in certain areas and how it changes in the physical environment so that it will help in the future generations. Why ecology is so important? It is important because it helps us to know and understand nature of how it works. Understanding or the knowledge of ecology is important to maintain a healthier and productive for the life of humans and other living organisms. This provides a basis for formulation for a good conservation. Conservation means the right or wise use of natural resources so that our environment will not damage and in good conditions. Relevance of ecology in the modern environment today. It is relevant in the world that we are living in today to identify the internal and external factors that affect the environment, populations, and communities to understand the nature of how all this work. Relevance of ecology in the modern environment today. So, in the modern environment, the relevance of ecology today to keep the environment clean and green so that everyone is responsible to know what is the cause and effect if where it comes because it is our obligations to provide clean environment full of natural resources to lead a better life at present and provide best environment in future generations importance of ecology what is the importance of